Litigation Help. My name is Heather Huida Twin, and joining me here is our regular guest, Heather Douglas. Hi, Heather. Hi. So today we're going to talk about some useful tips that are provided by a judge on how to succeed in a motion. Recently, a judge actually adjourned a hearing because the lawyer did not comply with the requirements um, stated in the notice of profession. The case name is Lab versus Municipality of York, and you can access it in um, on Canly using the link that I'll provide in the description box below. So um, here are the 12 points, and if you like, you can pause the video now to read through them. talk about three key points that were made in that key decision that we just screenshotted and also the link is below in the video. The first key point that the judge makes is that the notice to the profession is a minimum standard. It's a minimum requirement. It's not optional. It's what's expected of litigants and their lawyers. The second key point that the judge makes is the importance of compendium for oral argument. So compendium is a brief that has the key excerpts of case law and key excerpts of records that you are going to refer to during oral argument. That material that's in there is what's already been filed with the court and uploaded to case lines. So you're not adding any new material, you're just exerting from the material that's already been filed. The last key point I want to address is hyperlinking. So it's very important in case lines that we hyperlink to whatever you're referencing. So for example, if you have a factum and you're referencing a case, you're going to hyperlink to the Canley decision. Similarly, if in your factum, you are referencing an affidavit and a, partic a particular exhibit or a paragraph, you are going to hyperlink to that affidavit that you're referencing to the right page number that has either that exhibit or that reference to what's contained in the affidavit. And the reason you're doing that hyperlinking is because the judge does not want to go through all the material. Um, they want help. They want to be taken directly to the right page. They want to read your factum, and they want they don't want to have to go and sort through thousands of pages themselves. They want the litigant or the lawyer to help them learn the case, and that the best way you can do that is hyperlinking. And if you don't know how to hyperlink, that's all right, because we have other videos. We can even do another video on hyperlinking. But you can also, there are lawyers and law clerks and all sorts of people that can help you learn how to hyperlink or can do it for you. But the key points about case line is know your hyperlinking and make sure you're using it appropriately in accordance with the notice to the professions. So the profession. So you're not just uploading anything you want to case lines. You should only be uploading what's been filed with the court. And then of course, you might have like an exception here or there. Yeah. For example, like a compendium, you might not have your compendium. Uh, that might be something you do closer to the hearing date. Once you get your key uh, case line pages and case line numbers, but you're not putting in the compendium things that you didn't already file with the court. That's great. Heather, I wanted to uh, ask a follow up question because you know that you mentioned a notice to professions several times. So yeah. this sounds like just as important as the rules of civil procedure. Like, I mean, when I started, I kind of thought, OK, I just need to know the rules. But so that's not correct is it 
Yeah, it's, you know what, it's very tricky because when you read the rules, you wouldn't necessarily know, yeah. weren't yeah. a lawyer, that there are these notices that you have to refer to and that a lot of these notices tweak some of the rules depending on what jurisdiction you are in. So it's important to always check the notice and to make sure you're checking the notice for the right region because some regions, they have different notices and they have slightly different rules and wow. people can get caught up in that. And it's unfair, I think, to litigants that it's not like a seamless thing to read. You know, yes. it's not like you read the rules and then the rules are hyperlinked to the notices and that it's just easy to find. Yeah. But unfortunately, even though it's not easy to find, you are still expected to follow them. Okay, so to help our viewers a little bit, I will uh, uh, put in a link to the notice to the profession in the description box below, so you don't have to Google all over the place. Um, so yeah, and just to clarify again, the rules of civil procedure are Ontario wide, but the notice to the profession are actually region specific. Is that correct? Yeah, and some yeah. notices apply to the entire province. Oh, right. <laughs> so it does get confusing as well. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, uh, so even my generalization is incorrect. Yes, because I, I remember seeing that there is one for Ontario, but then there are specific ones. Uh, so you got to be careful. Like if there's one for Toronto, and then there, there will be a different one for, say, Milton or Ottawa or something. Yeah, you have to be very careful and Toronto, being Toronto, yes. has always has their own special uh, idiosyncrasies that right. they like to add in because um, I guess we think we're really special in, in Toronto. <laughs> so they have to have a lot of special rules as well. <laughs> right. Heather, was there something else that you wanted to add? As oh, well? yes. Yeah. You asked um, a question about tabs. Oh, yeah, tabbing, because I know in the old days with paper um, documents, it's just so, so easy to understand the concept of tabs, right? I mean, so you have all these different tabs on the side that you just kind of flip the tab A, okay, here it is. Now, how do we do the equivalent uh, in a virtual document? One way to do the equivalent is to bookmark the document wow. in a software like Adobe. So before you upload the document to case lines, it's yeah. bookmarked in a PDF software. And then there's an option when you're uploading it to yeah. upload a PDF as a bookmarked PDF. If you do that in case lines, it will separate the PDFs into slightly like different documents. So you can find the tabs. But interestingly, yeah. uh, there's a, I think it's in the notice of the profession yeah. that the bookmarking function, like uh, uploading as a bookmarked PDF, should not be done for affidavits with exhibits. So you can do that for other types of documents, but they don't want you doing that for an affidavit. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. It's a bit strange, but that, that would be the equivalent to tabbing. In my mind, the closest thing would be bookmarking your document. Oh and uploading it as a bookmarked PDF. So the final word would be that uh, for, for our viewers to check your specific relevant notice of profession and follow that closely, uh, follow what they what they recommend closely. Yeah, always follow that closely. Yeah. Um, if you're in doubt yeah. and you're not sure you did something right, yeah. just make sure you're hyperlinking then. <laughs> if wow. you just... Uh, but the reason it should be bookmarked before you upload in any event, because it, it's supposed to be bookmarked when you file it. This is uh, the ideal practice, but I've, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, I have received many documents from other lawyers that have not been bookmarked oh. and the materials still got filed. So um, don't like panic if you didn't bookmark your document this time. Just do it the next time. Yeah, I think the purpose of this is really just to uh, make it more convenient for opposing counsel and the judge to to uh, navigate your documents. And uh, if you keep people uh, happy, they, they'll be more likely to listen to you. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I mean, 
sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But right. if you lose, you want to lose because um, the judge rejected your argument, not because right. they didn't like the way you uploaded things to case no, sure. lines. That's never a good thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. Okay. So Heather, I think that that's it. I think we covered everything. Is that right? Or... Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. All right. So thanks, Heather, again for for coming here today, and thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and we're gonna see you at the next video. Bye. Bye. Okay. So